Welcome to Out of the Box with Christine, the podcast for conscious entrepreneurs. Are you willing to step into your greatness? Are you ready to shine? Well, get ready, truth seeker. You're in for an amazing ride. And now, here's the host of the show, Christine Blasdale. Welcome back to Out of the Box with Christine. I am your host, motivational media coach, Christine Blasdale. And, uh, you know, the show, the, the subtitle of the show or the tagline is the podcast for conscious entrepreneurs. And today is a perfect example of that with my two guests today. Um, usually I have just one, so I feel very, I feel doubly blessed. Joining us is Phoebe Yu, who is the co-founder and CEO of Etitude which is a material science company and a direct-to-consumer sustainable lifestyle brand known for its bedding, bath, and sleepwear, and its uh, proprietary clean bamboo fabric, which I'm going to get into that because I love me some bamboo. I can't tell you. <laughs> I, I think it's the greatest thing that's ever been invented, and I love the idea that this is a sustainable, clean uh, product that you're you're putting out for the world. Also joining is the other the co-founder and president of edit is it attitude or attitude? Attitude. 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 Attitude like attitude. Hmm. I love that. Uh, Cat Day and Cat is joining us. So we have Phoebe who is currently in Australia and Cat who is in Los Angeles, my hometown. Representing. Welcome to Out of the Box with Christine. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So. Um, so I had mentioned there my absolute fondness for, for bamboo, bamboo fabrics. Um, when I first, I think, came across um, bamboo sheets, I said to my wife, I said, where have these been all my life? And why haven't we known about them? And I will never, ever use anything else. And then I, in, on our travels, um, discovered uh, bamboo fabric for, you know, clothing. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, can you talk about, well, we'll get into the formation of the company and all of that great stuff, but um, how did you both come into line with, with bamboo and in particular um, creating these textiles, uh, the fabrics that you are right now having? And um, we'll put the website too for people because I know they're going to say, I want to get me some, some stuff. But um, how did you how did you become interested or introduced into bamboo? And let's start with Phoebe, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, so bamboo is a very versatile plant. It's probably the most sustainable plant in, on the planet. I mean, land grown plant. Let's be very scientific here. <laughs> um, it's it's a weed, so it it grows, you know, uh, with. Uh, rainwater, no need for um, chemicals like pesticides or, um, and, and it grows so fast. So it's, it's, it's a traditional Asian background. People had using that for a lot of purposes, but yeah, using that in textile is a development only started like 20, 30 years ago. But, uh, and I have been in the textile industry for a long time. So uh, I also see that how toxic it can be, the traditional, like the cotton, the polyester, uh, very polluting, they're polluting the, um, the planet. Uh, they need a lot of chemical to grow and process that is harming the workers uh, who work uh, to produce those textiles. So after I moved to Australia, same uh, from um, China, I also get um, a lot of, uh, uh, education on the climate change issue. So I decided to, to develop product that do not harm, you know, the, the planet, uh, you know, help to address the, the, the environment issues. But since I'm uh, familiar with textiles, I was looking at the opportunity of textile. So I already know that bamboo can be made into textiles, but the traditional way to process it also involves harmful chemicals. The bamboo mm. rayon is viscous of the world. It's not ideal. I mean, bamboo itself is great, but the process is not, not perfected at that time. So I think there's an opportunity there. Uh, so it's to utilizing um, my knowledge in this space to, to use a 100% clean process to, to do that. Uh, so that, that's why our, our proprietary uh, fabric called clean bamboo. So it would really emphasize the clean side of it. There's no 
any harmful chemical involved in the growth of the bamboo and also in the process of the bamboo. Uh, and also we recycle the, that organic compound which use, we use to dissolve the bamboo to get the fiber out. And we also recycle the water in this closed loop process to get the fiber out. So it's, it's, it's highly sustainable, it's safe water, there's no harmful chemicals. And also it yields a very high quality fiber, which is the base of all our uh, you know, textile uh, and it has a very wide application, so we can make that into beddings, bath. We recently just launched a vegan cashmere. It feels like cashmere is still a hundred percent, you know, you know, bamboo fiber. Um, yeah, my uh, my my mother in law was impressed about that. <laughs> She's getting that for Mother's Day for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so that's why this has come about. So okay, this is amazing material. So if we can refine the process, then the end product would be way much better so i think for entrepreneurs we always standing you know is kind of standing on 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 the you know progress of the last people right okay someone come up oh, okay bamboo can also make into textile but the process is not good so we kind of refine the process and also commercialize that to to be able to get to the hands of of consumers to address the problem people love bamboo but they also say ah oh, the process is not that great should i use it or not and we fix that problem for them. So that's that's what's the whole concept of attitude come from. Yeah. And and the direct to to consumer or direct direct to customer model too is just brilliant because now is the time to do that with all social media, um, and all of the clever mm -hmm. things that you can do and how many people you can reach through TikToks and Instagram and and all that. Um, it's the perfect time for that as well, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, well, today is actually. It's super meaningful. I just post a uh, post on LinkedIn. Nine years ago, attitude started in Australia today, um, March the eighteenth. Oh, congratulations! Yeah. yeah. So at that time, you you know, as a female entrepreneur, uh, immigrants, it's difficult to get into the traditional uh, big distributed, you know, like big uh, department store, or they just oh, we don't know about this product. You are new. We do not know you. Uh, we're not sure. So, so direct to consumer, I think, also democratize it that you have a, a, a cheaper, a quicker way to start it to start directly uh, testing your products and ideas with customers themselves instead of um, traditionally you only have to go the wholesale route. Uh, but of course, these days uh, uh, you, you just go where the consumers are, but it, it has helped us for our very simple beginning that we have that direct line. Um, and also customers. you can tell your story there. There's just the, you know, mm. I, I always say some like really successful brands and I do media for, for solopreneurs, home business um, uh, folks and people who have, you know, larger, uh, small to medium uh, businesses. And what I always say is that there's the story is also really, really important because people will support something that mm. is, um, that is good for the environment or good for the world or good for the planet. That's an added bonus, but the story along the lines of why this was created, whatever it is, if it's a new widget or if it's a, um, a nutritional powder or, you know, textiles and, and material that have come into consumer goods, bedding, um, clothing. I mean, especially with, with, with clothing in the textile industry. Yes. I've heard just horrific things about, mm -hmm. Um, the the safety of workers, but also all of the the runoff and the you know. Um, can you um, educate our uh, listeners and the viewers who are watching on YouTube? Can you educate them on, you know, maybe so the next time they they go and grab something, you know, a, a cheap, you know, top somewhere um, or some jeans. I know the jeans. I know the denim industry is really horrific, but um, can you talk about the the process and the chemicals that are um, put into the air and the water and um, all of that in traditional textile creation? Yeah, absolutely. I can jump in on that. And yeah. textile industry is actually a massive polluter. Like you said, it's the second largest polluter after oil in the world. So it's, wow. just imagine that. Uh, most people, when they think about pollution, they're thinking oil and transportation, but textiles and our purchases of fashion and home goods is the second largest contributor to that. And um, it's the second largest consumer of water as well, fresh water resources. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, especially for denim. Denim is a really water intensive, but also any kind of cotton. Uh, it requires a lot of water to grow. Uh, it's a very inefficient plant from that perspective. Uh, and also textiles contributes 10% of global CO2 emissions contributing to climate change. So it's it's definitely a big problem. Uh, and so one way to do that, we can ask people to not buy those things. But is that realistic? No, <laughs> probably not. Uh, so really, how can we change the materials that are being used uh, in, in apparel and in home goods to be more sustainable and less draining on our resources, as well as the processes that we use? Uh, how can we expand the life cycle of these products so that we're not just buying products that last us one season and throwing them into the landfill. How can we create products that last multiple seasons and in last generations, you can pass it on to the next generation even, or how can you find a new life for them, recycle them, upcycle them? Uh, so those are all conversations that are happening in sustainable fashion today. And, you know, and back to that direct to consumer model, um, not only do you get to tell your story, and people have the opportunity to support you directly. Um, there, there seems to be for me, I don't know, it seems to be for me, like having that direct connection to the manufacturer or the creator of a product or, or service. Um, not only do I feel good because I'm supporting, you know, I'm, I'm putting my dollars towards someone who has had a, has had a dream, has had a goal, has worked really hard, but also I feel like I, like I always, I have that communication, that direct communication because I've dealt with, you know, I've bought things, I've bought all kinds of things. And when you go through some of these large uh, retailers, you feel sort of like you're, you know, you're just another number to them where when you are communicating directly with the creator of a product or a service, um, you're able to get that feedback right away. And the customer satisfaction, the, you know, um, you know, if somebody has, if I have a question or if I want to um, make a suggestion, because I'm an idea person, right? So I'm like, I'm kind of like you both is that um, I'll see something and I'll find a way I'll say, oh, this, you could use it in this way, or have you ever thought about doing this? And expanding it because I'm just like I'm a producer too, so I'm always looking at ways how we can make things better and um, and and create more, create more. But that direct connection um, that you would have, so that when a when a customer gets those sheets and or gets those clothes and just says this is the most beautiful thing, that's also got to feel really good for you when you hear when you hear back that feedback from your customers. Can either of you relate to that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. We we love the reviews that we get from our customers. I mean, we could brag and just talk about all the amazing things that people say, but some of the the stories really move us to tears. Like we, recently, there was a, a woman who wrote that her kid who has autism and has extreme sensitivity, um, tactile sensitivity, can't sleep on anything but attitude because it is just the softest material out there. And that just helps us so much knowing that we were able to change somebody's life for the better um, with our product. And that is really amazing. And, you know, we hear that all the time, you know, people who are receiving cancer treatments, they're very sensitive um, and they can't sleep on anything because it's so scratchy. It just really irritates them. They can't get good sleep or they're really hot. They're sweating uh, because of various medical conditions. Um, they just can't get normal sleep and that affects your entire life. If you can't get decent rest, that's, you know, you can't have a normal life, but as soon yes. as they're able to find something that, you know, is comfortable, is soft, is actually breathable, so they're not sweating, it's moisture wicking. Um, it really changes, uh, how they, yeah. I, w I would also live. think, you know, people with all different types of skin conditions and, and in and, and burn victims as well you know people who have su yeah. suffered um or great deals of women burns. or women going through menopause oh word. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. yeah <laughs> yes right now i'm going through pre-menopause yes Ooh, i, I yeah. definitely cannot sleep on anything else i i definitely you know our sheets just help me sleep 
better so i can even with the busy entrepreneur life flying around the world like i don't have jet lag and also the robes also you know launch around it keeps me cool you know um yeah just back to that review of the um sensory overwhelming that case and it's actually an australian uh customer uh and very interesting reason to find um our sheets are so good they actually have these kind of soothing and the medical benefit uh it's actually can be part of the ndis people are able to get um yeah that's uh, money from ndis because it is it's proven to help them uh so but i think that's only available in australia in the us probably and not but that's that's a proven how a good our sheets is actually really help people and then and then they can that that can be part of the ndis system yeah so for people I mean, that, I mean i've been talking to sorry go ahead oh no i was just going to say for people who who uh, um i don't understand what ndis is in australia um it is um a funding mechanism for yeah um, so they can get uh, uh get uh, reimbursed, reimbursed for the cost yeah it's like a flexible spending account yes here mm-hmm. in the us yeah it's, yeah it's so, so you, important and it's so mm-hmm. critical to mm-hmm. um to people all types of people with different different disabilities mm-hmm. so i am yep. so happy to hear that because that is mm-hmm. really really huge oh i just want to spread the word about you people like i wanted to yeah. tell everybody hey, hey, about attitude yeah. um so yeah so well hopefully through through this podcast and through the youtube channel people will find out we'll make sure so if you're watching or listening check the show notes there'll be a link a direct link that you can go and you can see all of these beautiful products that are, um, again, clean bamboo, not just your regular bamboo uh, type of, of um, garments or, or bedding, but clean, meaning you're doing something really good for the, the world um, and yourself and your family. Um, go ahead, Kat, you were going to say something. Yeah, just to build on what we were saying about uh, skin conditions, I've actually just been chatting with a dermatologist recently and uh, he's been literally looking for something like attitude for years. And as soon as I told her about our product, she's like, wow, this is exactly what I've been looking for as a dermatologist because cotton and many other options are just not good for your skin because they are, um, they absorb water and that breeds bacteria. So if you're struggling with acne or any kind of blemishes or any kind of um, sensitivity to chemicals, which are often used in finishing or processing conventional uh, textiles, you're going to be reacting to that. Um, the same thing with eczema or any other like skin conditions like that. So she was really excited that we have absolutely zero harmful chemicals in the growing as well as in the processing. And she's like, wow, I can't believe this exists. <laughs> she's going to be carrying it in her, in her I dermatology. Think, I think that's great. Yeah. Because, you know, people think, oh, well, if it's cotton, if it's if it's cotton, it has to be good. But also, they don't realize that all of the chemicals that they spray. I've I've spoken to um, a naturopath. Actually, I'm gonna I'll share your information with a naturopathic physician um, in the United States, um, uh, who is very much aware of the pesticides and chemicals. And he was talking about the two most heavily sprayed crops, um, uh, food wise, was coffee. And wine, uh, wine grapes, grapes, Be- because oh, no. the bugs love, uh, apparently the bugs love coffee just as much as we do. Um, <laughs> and so they're very heavily sprayed. And so all those major brands, those big, you know, Barbucks types of coffee, um, unless it's certified organic and um, rigorously tested, um, they're laden with chemicals. Then you put hot water through it and it so it activates it even more but we're becoming i guess we're becoming a little bit more aware of these things but when it comes to bedding when it comes to something that we spend a lot of time where you know we spend half of our lives asleep um when we spend that much time uh, people are sometimes not realizing why they're getting bad sleep why they're not feeling well why there's you know all of these skin conditions that they have some mystery skin conditions as well um, it can be related back to those chemicals that are in that, the cotton. And I've seen, I've seen some products that have been beddings that have been marketed as bamboo. But when you look at the um, uh, ingredients, well, not ingredients, but the, the label, the label, 
um, polyester. They put polyester. Ah. Now, polyester, it, am I wrong? Is polyester like petroleum, a petroleum byproduct? Yes. Yep. yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so a lot of bedding is blends. So definitely don't go for microfiber or, you know, any kind of the polyester sheets. That's absolutely terrible. Uh, that, it just feels crappy on top of being you very And it doesn't breathe. You can't, it, 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 yeah, yeah, it's like a cloak of icky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. a lot of what they call bamboo sheets could be a blend of um, bamboo rayon or viscose, which is already bad plus polyester, which makes it even worse. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. read the labels. Um, make sure you're getting something that is certified with a Wecotex label, which means that there are no harmful chemicals. Um, so Etitude's textiles are actually certified a Wecotex class one, which means safe for babies. It's extremely hard to get. And it just means that it's free of harmful chemicals all around. Oh, and congratulations on that. You guys are doing yeah. something so good for the planet. And yeah, smart just, it should be business decision. Yeah. <laughs> You're smart ladies. Think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should just just save for human. We why we like well, adults need safe, you know, clean products too, not just babies. So just pure it safe for human is easier. Um mm. yeah, polyester is the worst because it cannot biodegradable. I mean cotton or uh, other plant-based, uh, at, at least in the end of the day, they can still buy the gribble, but polyester is really the worst of the worst. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's, it's put into so many um, um, products and clothing as well. I mean, clothing and bedding and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. So, um, so where is the, where do you manufacture? Or what, do you have a, do you have a, a warehouse where there's, all yeah. this machinery we, going on and the <laughs> people and where where are you based yeah so we uh, we uh, our warehouse are in in the u.s and in australia in australia it's in melbourne and sydney uh in in the u.s it's in utah um but our uh supply chain we have a globally distributed um supply chain so there's asia uh and there's uh we're setting up in south america and also in portugal uh so the pet we our aim is to bring that more next to our market, so like uh, Asia would more su supply to the to the Asia Pacific region, but uh, the South America will be supplied the U.S. Canada, uh, and then in Portugal it's more that they are specialized on knit because we are also growing our offering, so they kind of it's it's famous for their knitting products, not really woven. Um, so I think that's also one thing consumer need to look at. Yeah, how's how how's how um, transparent, how trace, traceable the, the, the a brand supply chain is. Yeah, because we are also a, a B Corp. We got B Corp certification last year, also in March. So March is a very uh, significant month for us. It's also Women's Hist History Month. Uh, it's it's our nine nine year birthday. Uh, it's also sleep week right now. I think. No, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So your, your podcast recording is really a good um, time. you know timing um, is impeccable. Yeah. So yeah, so so I think this is the 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 transparency and traceability of the supply chain. So going through B Corp certification, they have very strict, rigorous of right. Is your food supply chain transparent? Um, uh, are they all also sustainable, aligned with your missions? So that help us to kind of you know stay really on top of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And um and where to from here? What are what are your what are your what are your goals? What are your um you know, what's the next step for you or what would you like to see happen? Well, we'd love to replace as much conventional textiles in the market as we can with our more sustainable ones. And we continue to develop more and more uh, really great fabrications. Uh, so we started out with what we call vegan silk, which is what our bed sheets are made out of. Uh, and then we also applied that same textile to our loungewear collection, which is beautiful apparel. I love wearing our pants. I wear them to all the fancy events. Honestly, they're so beautiful. I love them and they're so comfortable. Um, we also developed a waffle knit, which is for our bath towels. And uh, very recently, as Phoebe mentioned, we just launched our vegan cashmere uh, as a throw blanket. But we'll be making more things with these materials. And then later this year, we'll have a new fabrication that will take on a, another uh, kind of conventional textile that we're really excited to release later in the summer. 
I'm just going to tease it here, but it's going to be antimicrobial uh, completely naturally, which means that we'll, we'll make towels and sheets out of this new material. And uh, it means that you have to wash them less often because they are preventing bacterial growth and it won't smell as bad. Beautiful. <laughs> so create convenience but also you won't need to waste as much water and uh well and you know, you know the the lifetime the look and the feel of 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 bamboo fabric and and i was i don't know i've been looking and feeling some not not your not your bamboo fabric but some you know other stuff but um the look and feel of it is so it's to me is very is elegant as well i just i think I, I, when I when I put on, uh, especially when it comes to clothing, um, you know, a bamboo shirt or something, it's 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 soft. It's it's just it goes with you. It feels like you're not wearing anything. It's like you're naked, but you're not. Um, but I was thinking because I was just looking in my living room, um, and you know, the, the two most popular type of um, curtains drapes are the the sheer not sheer but you know white. Um, uh, lovely white we have like a, a natural white kind of looking thing here um, some panels um, but also blackout curtains and I don't know if you'd be able to do that but that was like my hit I'm an intuitive as well so whenever I get an idea a thing but if you if you're able to make curtains you know panels drapes yummy yummy how nice would that be and it's antimicrobial. If you made it antimicrobial, then you don't have to worry about those things getting all moldy and funky and all that, right? Yeah, it's one day, one day. We'll okay. definitely see that as an opportunity. Okay. I personally would, would love that as well. And, you know, we've researched some curtains and honestly, there's nothing but like polyester. Most of them are polyester, especially blackout curtains. So yeah, that could be really, really interesting for us to do. Oh, then you have a whole homeware division. <laughs> this is awesome um if, you know for those you know for those um especially women um entrepreneurs creators inventors um that are listening to the show or um or watching on on youtube um any sage words of advice when because i know that you've probably had some bumps along the road um maybe it seemed like it was just you know, your dream of what you wanted to accomplish seems so big. And as you were saying, Phoebe, you know, being an immigrant, and especially here in Australia, um, funding or the lack thereof of funding, how to go about it. Um, and both of you, if you don't mind, do you have some um, some sage words of advice for those uh, folks that are coming up and um, maybe they're thinking about expanding their business or about going global or doing something on a big scale? Um, yet they're scared or they've hit a couple bumps in the road? Yeah, I guess. Resilience is always the number one <laughs> personality an entrepreneur should have because, yeah, there's, uh, you know, there's always ups and downs. Um, um, I agree. It is difficult to raise money for uh, female and immigrants everywhere, but uh, I think U.S. is slightly better than Australia, so all our money raised actually from the U.S. market, which uh, kind of a bit unfortunately, we always want Australia investors also on a cap table, but haven't, you know, have had one since. Um, and uh, I work with each other. I think the world is, you know, the market is big enough. I think more, I think company and brands also realize that to just, just work together probably, you know, it's better than competing each other because probably there's, you know, your, 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 everyone's products are slightly different um seems that's a new trend on the market right now so be open-minded see we, my traditional is oh how we can can we work with competitors well, no maybe you would interesting find you might be able, even be able to collab with your competitors these days you never know so yeah uh, yeah joint ventures and collaborations are very um mm -hmm. i think it's the the wave of the future instead of just mm -hmm. this thing of go it alone go it alone kat what about mm -hmm. you do you have any um words of advice or uh, inspiration for people? Yeah, I think uh, for Attitude, it's really been all about investing into a great product first. Uh, so starting there, because it's really hard to market a product that doesn't work. Even if you get them to, <laughs> even if you get them to purchase once, they're not going to come back and the reviews will be not great. 
So I, I think for us, we really focused first on getting that amazing customer experience and really nurturing our, our customers and having turning them into our biggest ambassadors. Um, you know, working with them to write great reviews, but also having them send uh, content for us. That's been really useful because then we can use that in our marketing. So that's what I was going to ask. I was going to, I was wondering if you had, if you had people d doing Instagram reels or TikToks going, this is the greatest thing. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so important to just get the word out. And like you said, in the beginning of this podcast, now is the time because social media is, you know, everybody's on it. <laughs> so absolutely. definitely leverage it. Well, it and makes, I it think makes one, stars. one thing that we yeah. would like to do ourselves and we're trying to do more of is being in front of the camera as, as founders. Um, we, I don't, we haven't done that historically so much, but we're starting to do that a little bit more, uh, even with interviews like this, just getting the word out there that who are the people behind this brand, um, and I think it it creates such a huge connection with the customer if Abs they can see who's actually behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a media coach, that's exactly what I tell all my clients. It doesn't matter if you're an accountant uh, or if you're a life coach. Um, people need to see you and see your eyes and mm -hmm. they can relate to you, but also that form of trust. Um, as well. And it's just, it, it personalizes the brand and it just makes it like, this is a human, human I'm dealing with and not some robot, you know, yeah. <laughs> algorithm. Well, on, the, on, on that note, Kat hasn't told her story, how she joined Attitude and why. That's a great story. Yes. How we met. Do tell us. Well, we yeah. met online. Uh, so once Phoebe already perfected the, the textile and spent about four years in the research and development and commercialized it into our first product, which was Sheets, she started to see kind of a little bit of organic traction coming from North America. People were buying sheets from Australia, having them shipped from Australia all the way to the U.S., paying the crazy shipping fees. So she realized, OK, maybe she needs a partner in the U.S. And I had just sold my first company. I've been a serial entrepreneur for a while. Uh, so I was looking for the next big thing out there that I could join and discover across the world. And basically bring to the U.S. market, make it bigger, uh, create awareness for it. And uh, when Phoebe sent me the sheets, I had the best week <laughs> of my life. Like, you're like, I need to work with you. <laughs> yes, it was literally like that. And my husband had the best sleep of his life. And he was like, Kat, you have to join this company. You know, this is amazing. This is the best sheets that I ever slept on. So comfortable on top of being sustainable. And at the time, we didn't even know how sustainable they were. We didn't have all the scientific measurements that we do today. We actually just did that last year where we quantified that we're saving 99% of water versus cotton and 38% wow. of CO2. And versus silk, the numbers are outrageous. We're saving 100% of water and 86% of CO2. So these numbers were just like staggering to us. We're like, we knew we were sustainable, but didn't we didn't know quite how good it was until recently oh see my little brain my little my little mind is just like going all those things too with silk all those things that we associate with silk the silk pillowcases right if you have an, a, an, an extra luxury brand of bamboo clean bamboo pillowcases yay and then you know those um you know those sleep uh, eye mask eye things masks. you know yeah. the sleeping masks i because I I need them, but I hate them because they're with all the top. They're and they're on my eyes, <laughs> they're on yes. my face. But they're they're made with um with the silk, uh, which is loaded with chemicals and pesticides. Um, and then the other stuff is just it's got uh, polyester and all that stuff. If you made oh, if you made the sleep we have, mask, we, have, we will I send you one. Do you we have eye mask masks masks. made out of yeah. the yeah. clean? Yes, we do. Yes, you ladies are my new favorite entrepreneurial brilliant brains. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. Yeah, so I, that's actually also yes. I, I need that every night. Otherwise I cannot sleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we yeah. have the yeah, because and and I'll and I'll get them for Christmas too from people, you know, my lovely yeah. family will get uh, me. I go, oh, these are great. <laughs> mm -hmm. I won't wear them. Oh my gosh, that's so brilliant. 
I am so excited that uh, that our paths crossed and that uh, I was able to get you on the show today. Um, I'm going to make sure, again, we'll put the, the website link in the show notes so people can check out all the amazing products that you have. And it doesn't matter if you're in Australia or the U.S., do you have global shipping too? So like if somebody's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you're listening to this in, um, apparently we're big in um, uh, Ireland. I don't know why. And, oh. um, and um, was it Portugal? I think it was. Oh. So mm-hmm. wherever you're listening to this or wherever you're watching this, you, you can um, place your order. Just we'll, we'll put the website on there. And um, I just want to thank you both again for your time and for your brilliant contribution uh, to the environment um, on in so many different levels, but um, also inspiring me as myself um, as a businesswoman as well uh, today. Thank you so, so much. Kat Day and Phoebe Yu from Etitude, 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 from Etitude. Get your Etitude right now. Thank you again, both ladies, so, so much for being with me today. Thank you. All right. Great conversation. Us. Well, that's what I yeah, do. Awesome. I'm a I'm a talker. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> I want to thank our wonderful listeners too. Um, if you're not subscribed to the show, go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Click subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You get notified every single time I upload a new show. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button as well. You'll get notified when a new video comes out. Uh, if you want more information about the show, go to outoftheboxwithchristine.com. If you want more information about me, go to christineblasdale.com and all those links will be in the show notes so you won't miss a thing. Until next time, as I always say, remember to think outside that damn box like these amazing ladies. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>